This week, I met up with my high school best friend of 12 years and former business school dropout buddy. We had one of those real conversations, the type of convos we have in her car, in a miscellaneous parking lot or driveway somewhere in Mississauga, where we reminisce in the past to where we've come. We actually went to a high school specifically enhanced for business and then went on to go to our first and last year of business school back in 2014. Though we both dropped out, we took very different paths and we wanted to share our experience and all the highs and lows of it all. So here's a candid conversation on dropping out and finding your way with Sonia Deer, linguistic entrepreneur and my favorite deer. both went to Laurier for business yeah something that we did not actually want to study yeah. I guess but like why did you decide to to go to Laurier for business I definitely went because my friends were going it was like the thing to do everyone was applying to business school because we were in the mm-hmm. IBT program which is the international business and technology program so that's why it just felt like the natural next step and like everyone wanted to go to the laurier program everyone wanted to go to these like three or four Mm -hmm. schools that everyone was going to and was like considered like you're smart if you got into those so then like i feel like we both were kind of like oh yeah like that's what we want to strive for and i also thought marketing was like graphic design which (laughs) it's not at all (laughs) Yeah, I feel the same way. Like you said, we went to IBT, which was, it was a very, like, I guess, competitive environment in a way where, yeah, everyone wanted to go to these, like, three or four business schools. And that was, like, our measure of success. Yeah. And, like, for me, I always knew I wanted to do entrepreneurship and I wanted to go into that. And I kind of convinced myself that, oh, studying business, that's, like, what I should do to to get to like that's what I need to do to become an entrepreneur. Yeah. You know, I'll learn more of that stuff in school, but it really wasn't like that it was more I don't even know how to describe it but it was very like mechanical yeah it was very like oh if you make a business plan then you can start a business sort of thing Mm -hmm. whereas like there wasn't like professors that had like built these big companies and like you know were examples of what they were teaching Mm -hmm. they were just teaching subjects like at least in my like our experience Mm -hmm. I guess but like maybe other people interpret it differently but definitely gave you ideas of how to plan it out mm-hmm. but but in a very like structured impractical way yeah like, and i feel like that's another reason we kind of yeah went into business it's like yeah. if this doesn't work out we will still make money somewhere. yeah like, like it's we a have safe a backup option plan. yeah it's yeah. a safe backup option and yeah and also i think we went to university because like that was what you do there was no like taking a year off there was no like there's that option didn't exist and like not no one families. yeah not in our families and like no one would ever even encourage you to do that it was like looked down upon to do that stuff yeah. and like take a break and even if you didn't know fully what you wanted to do you felt like you had to so let's preface this video like talking about some of the pros of university because it's not bad or good. It's not all binge eating yeah. after exams and yeah. like <laughs> I feel like I definitely like found myself in university. I was like the pinnacle of like what a shy kid is. People would be like, oh, you talk. Like, and I didn't like, I was just quiet. And like, I had my friends like Mitusha and Sonia and stuff. And like, we just kind of like hung out in our little- we Ate lunch in the hallway, yeah. the stairwell. Yes. Though I still think I was shy in like Laurier, I was like less shy. Mm -hmm. And like, I think the more I branched away from like people I knew, the more I was able to like actually like grow Mm -hmm. versus like holding on to like my close friends for dear life. Like I joined the the Laurier Consulting Club when I was in second year. And that was like very practical because we actually did consulting at like a startup hub. So that was the first time where I was like, wow, I'm actually doing something practical in business because like we actually were consulting real companies and learning about startups and stuff. And I I was getting like some consulting experience. So 
there were some clubs like that and and like you I was always a shy person too yeah. very like you know timid. yeah yeah very timid like I didn't like speaking to people it freaked me out I had like a lot of social anxiety and stuff yeah. but um, I also did house council the little residence council that she was talking about um, but a different one and that really made me also step out of my comfort zone yeah, and you're like definitely. talking to more people you're in this place yeah. where like I didn't have you I didn't yeah. have Mathush it was good to be forced to do that yeah. almost because then you like actually get outside of your comfort zone and like you know speak to people we went to a really small high school yeah. like everyone knew each other pretty much within yeah. like the grades but then you're going to a school with like 20,000 people and yeah. the people like the demographic was also very different from what we were used very to Caucasian <laughs> and it was also like we had good times like yeah it was fun like we go to like parties and we like you know like went to socials and events and stuff and the and turret like, shout out yeah to the turret. had our first drinky drinks um <laughs> No, you we know? didn't, mom and dad. <laughs> Lived on our own for Lived the first time. Yeah, so there's like those, I think like the life perks are really yeah. there, right? And the other thing was like, I don't know, <laughs> I try and like frame everything in a positive way now if I can. And like, at least this showed us, it gave us like a wake up call in yeah. a way, right? Yeah. Like if we didn't, if we went straight to what we wanted to do, yeah. I don't know, maybe we wouldn't have this level of self-awareness yeah. or this, Or like you know, this desire to like, do really well at what I want to do mm -hmm. because I want to like prove myself yeah. and be like I don't need to have like this degree or I don't need to have like this background mm -hmm. to like be successful in my own life and like I can do what I'm passionate about and like make and it thrive yeah I saw business as being this like open thing where yeah. Yeah, it may not be visually creative, but like you can be creative in other ways. But yeah. business school really didn't feel like that. Like you yeah. said, it felt like you're just stuck in this box and you have to do everything it felt in like this box. You had to go there with like a specific career in business yeah. in mind, like working for a company. So like mm -hmm. if you want to do HR. And a specific type of yeah, company. Yeah. If you want to do HR, if you want to do accounting, accounting if finance. you want to do finance or whatever. Even like the people there, it wasn't, they just weren't for me. Like. I don't think I'm competitive in that way. Everyone saw each other as like a competitor almost. Like even when I got into this like floor council thing, like my floor was like, wasn't like able to like, you know, express like that they're excited for me or happy for me. It was more like, oh, I didn't get that. So like, I'm not gonna support your sort of progress in this. In those moments, you're like, there is like this false sense of community in a lot of universities where it's like school spirit and like da 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 da, which is just basically like, promoing an establishment that takes your money. It was like a challenge we had to overcome and it made us stronger, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, like, bruh, <laughs> dropping out and being brown is not oh a good Oh my God, combo. the stress. <laughs> I still remember us like after yeah. every exam we would go to our our, our campus restaurant called Wilps yeah. and we would just like binge on like fries yeah. and food. We would literally like binge eat. Yeah we would and we would just like be just so there. upset and stressed and like about and that mark and stuff yeah. and like at that time like our, our self-worth was so tied to that yeah. that grade and we would feel so terrible oh my god we would just was like such a stressful time. barely pass exams and then just come and be like <laughs> i don't know what just happened I know. the extent of how bad it was yeah. it's like you know regular school stress yeah. but it was sort of like it was really breaking yeah up. and we didn't even know what to do because yeah. like i would just be so upset like especially during exams i would be like so upset all the time and i would tell my parents i'd be like i don't want to do this like i don't like this and they were like you know like just like three more years whatever and then you can do your whatever yeah. and like obviously they have good intentions they just want you to do well in life For and sure. like succeed in whatever you do but when you're that age and you're being told that it feels like your only option and you feel so trapped and you're like why did i make this choice yeah. okay so go yeah tell us tell us where i'm taking tell over us. this this is my channel now um but yeah what was it like telling oh like God. making making that decision to drop it like when was that moment that you made that decision and what was the reaction from that? we had a talk i think <laughs> yeah we did and it like prompted me to be like i'm gonna apply to art school and, and I didn't have money, right? So that was a problem because I, like, I think at Laurier, I didn't work. No, yeah. you didn't. No, I didn't work. And like, I remember just calling my dad and being like, 
like appa i need like this like whatever i don't know what the application cost like a hundred dollars yeah it was like a hundred dollars yeah each i think yeah like which is a lot of money when you're 18 yeah and, and i remember like asking my dad for like a hundred dollars or whatever the yeah, application yeah. fee was and being like oh it's for school i was like very vague which was really bad book <laughs> and i had like artwork that i'd like worked on and and like you know just during Laurier, I would just like draw and do yeah. my own stuff. I was like, I'm just gonna apply with what I have. So I just like put together like a rough portfolio and then I submitted it because like, I think it was like a bit past the deadline, but I had called them and I was like, hey, like I really need to apply. Like, you don't understand girl, I'm at Laurier. Um, <laughs> I applied to a business and design program at Waterloo and then I applied oh, yeah. to OCAD. I applied to those schools and then, you know, you just have to like wait. And then I got into like both of them, the Waterloo and the OCAD program. But I was like, if I do the business and design program, I know it's just kind of like, it's just what kind of like, doing? yeah, it's like what I'm doing and it's kind of just like a, like the easy way to yeah. do it, right? So I'm like not ruffling any feathers, but I really, wanted to go to OCAD because I was just like I want to like go to a school that's like immersed in art. I got in and then I kind of was like testing the water so I was like call my parents I was like hey like I want to uh, switch programs like I got into two like I don't know which one to go into whatever and then they were like kind of just like it was just like a, it was just like a if I brought up the conversation it was just like shut down it was like no and then one day I was just like, decided like, um, I did it. <laughs> I just dropped out. And then I accepted the OCAD offer. And then I told them and then they were like, not pleased. Again, <laughs> me just like YOLOing life. <laughs> but like, I knew I had to just make the call because yeah. you can't just like wait for someone to say yes. Like it's better like ask for like forgiveness, forgiveness than, than permission, permission right? <laughs> yeah. So I just like did it. They were super mad, like a lot of like my, they would call like my like aunts and uncles and they would like call me to be like, you know, like, oh, like you can't, like everyone's outsourcing design. Like, you know, they, they just outsource people in like different countries mm -hmm. and whatever. And like, just basically everyone was convincing me not to do it. But I was like, bro, it's too late. I've dropped out. <laughs> can't go back. Well, for me, it was like, well, you already know, but I, yeah, finished first year of business school and I was like, like, just like you, I was like, what am I doing? Why am I here? Like, yeah. I love learning and stuff. I've always been a big, like, bookworm or whatever. I love yeah. to read. I love to just, like, learn a lot. Yeah. Um, but I felt like my, my, this sounds so, like, cliche and <laughs> cheesy, but, like, my passion for learning was just passion. gone and, like, just, like, and I just surround, like, I need to be in an environment a lot of times, I find, where, like, the people around me are are passionate or like excited and stuff yeah. right and I didn't have that at Laurier I felt like everyone was kind of like a zombie everyone was just kind of focused on those marks yeah. and it just wasn't an environment that I was like like thriving in or even surviving and I felt like yeah. it was just it's super so draining. sad yeah it was so draining I was like yeah. what am I doing and I was like and I would like same thing with you I would like call my mom I guess and be like you know, I really don't like this and yeah. stuff. And she would say the same thing. Like, it's only three more years. Like, yeah. you're fine and stuff. <laughs> also, like, to tell someone it's only three <laughs> more years is a, it's a long period a long of time. time. <laughs> yeah. It's like, those... Now, time goes by really fast. But yeah. at that time, every day was so yeah. slow. It was, like, oh three years God. feels like ten years to yeah. me. Um, but then I finally told her, I was, like... I was too scared to do the whole dropout thing right yeah. away. I was, like like i can't i just i chickened out so yeah. i was like you know what um oh, mom yeah. i'm gonna take a leave of absence from school and i'm gonna take a year off because yeah. i just need to figure things out and i like reassured my parents that it's a year off like i made sure that i could go back to school to school yeah. um i had to take accounting in in summer school to do that but i was like you know what i'll do it just so that i can have that year off and so that so that they feel comfortable because they're like okay she's gonna go back and also i kind of felt like I needed that because I was like I don't even know what I'm going to do in this yeah. year off so it was like at least I have that that cushion there to catch me if I yeah. do fall at the end of the year yeah so I did like the year off and stuff and 
and it was a really fun year. I traveled a lot. I did an internship in Brazil. Um, and just like a lot, I started like an interior design firm. Oh, yeah. Part of me did my, des oh, my, my graphic design, design for <laughs> dear decor. <laughs> and like, I really enjoyed my year off. And I was like, wow, I learned so much more in this year than I did paying 20K for yeah. business school. Yeah. Um, like I learned so much more about business. But at the end of the year, I was like, I knew I didn't want to go back to business school. I knew yeah. I wanted to just drop out and, and just like do keep experientially learning or whatever. Yeah. But again, I chickened out because I was scared of my parents and I was like, they're going to kill me. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I can't. Like, my parents, I don't know. I feel like my parents were always considered the cool parents or they chill are. parents. They are. But when it comes to that, they their are not chill. Their parents are chill. <laughs> or, yeah, they were chilling with me, like, you know, yeah. going out and stuff. But but not not this. They, were, they made it very clear that, like, school is important and that you have to graduate and stuff. Yeah. Um, so at the end of that year, I went back to BBA because I was like, you know what? Now at least I got that experience and maybe I can make this BBA experience better. Yeah. And that was a terrible idea because the second year was even worse than the first because like, first of all, she wasn't there. Um, of course, other friends were there, but Pranavi and me have this like, you know, we, we go through, we were going through a similar situation. Yeah. I felt like none we of my could, other like, friends could relate. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, I, I kind of lost that support system, like to be there daily and go yeah. through the same thing. I mean, obviously you were still a support, yeah. but you were now in Toronto. You passed away. <laughs> you passed, stop. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I went back and I was like so unhappy and I felt so lonely and I was a year behind everyone now because the people in our grade were obviously a year ahead because yeah. I took a year off. But yeah, so I was so sad. I would just like, and I, and I was like, you know, like I have everything. I have like a nice apartment here. I'm going to a good business school. Yeah. I have a car at this point. I was like, I had a car there. Yeah. Oh. And I was like, I literally have everything. And yet I've never been more unhappy, unhappy in my life. I'm like, I have the stuff that, pe that people, you know, assume would make you happy and yeah. whatnot. And I was like, I, I was like so unhappy. Like I would just literally sit in my reading note, go to my channel and check out how to make that. <laughs> and I would just literally like bawl my eyes out every night. Cause yeah. I was like, I'm so lost. Literally, I would yeah. just like cry in my yeah, room all the time. Like, there's, Cause you're just so unhappy and yeah, you don't know, what, don't know to what, do, what to do. And you feel like powerless because exactly. like, you feel like you have no autonomy, even though you do. But uh, yeah, so at the end of that year, I was like, I really hate this. Yeah. And that summer, I tried to think about how I could tell my parents that like I did not want to do this and like I need to drop out. Yeah. But once again, I chickened out mm. and I did another year. But not I remember we talked about this, oh. and I was like, Are you sure you want to do something? I know. I remember, <laughs> I remember that conversation. It was a, like, no, it was it was a car conversation. No. Yes, it was a car. All the best conversations were car conversations. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I went back in third year to do psychology because I was like, I, I can't do another year of business. Like, I cannot, that I cannot do. But I was like, you know what? I'll do psychology. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> and I was like, why are you doing this? I have no idea. I literally was like, okay, psychology. So obviously that didn't go well. And at the end of that year, I was like, screw it. I'm done. I can't. Like, I'm done with, you know, just searching for this external validation and and doing this because I was like, like I'm so unhappy. I felt so like I just felt numb in life. I was yeah. like, nothing affects me. It just like going through the motions. Numb. Yeah, right. It's like I feel excited about nothing anymore. I'm just like living this. Like go to class, uh, yeah. study, memorize. Yeah, and just do. like this is it. Like I don't even know. Like when people would be like, why psychology? I was like, I don't know. I don't know. It's a degree. <laughs> it's a degree. Yeah. It's literally like okay, yeah. psychology. Um. So then at the end of that year, I was like, I can't do this anymore. So I was, uh, I was being really <laughs> a weird one, and I literally wrote like my way of expressing myself oh, is yeah. through writing. Yeah. So I wrote my parents this like long letter. I don't remember how many pages it was. But I wrote this letter about why like, like I couldn't do this. <laughs> yeah, it was it was like a short novel. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, I need to talk to you guys, and like I read them the the letter. Oh my god, such a cringy moment. But, <laughs> what but, a freaking Hallmark movie yeah. moment. <laughs> Dear family, <laughs> honestly, it's literally like that. But finally, I got it out, and then obviously they weren't happy, but they also saw how like upset I was, and they were probably like, okay, like, yeah, you know, maybe something's like really wrong. Yeah, and this was like not as you know we thought it was just normal stress yeah. or whatever. But like someone in my family would always say it's the easy way out and stuff i'm like it's really not now i have to try and succeed without a degree yeah. right without and same with you like you're yeah. you're succeeding without that credential that people see yeah. as success right yeah. like you know people ask you at a job interview sometimes like do you 
you have a degree and yeah. stuff and like if you don't have it yeah it's harder to get a job obviously yeah. so same thing because you have to prove yourself yeah you have to, to prove, prove yourself in some work. other way yeah so yeah i told them that and then i mean honestly they were very understanding which was nice like, yeah. I, I didn't get yelled at or anything yeah. but um luckily they the were like years. <laughs> they them. were they were good about it i guess as good as they could be i mean it uh, to be fair it is a big shock to them and yeah. a big like scary like you said they have good intentions and yeah. they just want to make sure their kids are okay are fine yeah so yeah. it was scary to them but they were like okay yeah okay <laughs> go ahead so dramatic. <laughs> but like how did you like deal with like that family like kind of like unsaid tension while you were like at home dropped out not knowing what to do <laughs> what did you do um honestly i think it was just a lot of training my own mind i was like i really value now like mental toughness and yeah we are big subscribers of male hustle culture and like <laughs> mental toughness like yeah. david goggins and stuff yeah um so like i really focused on just developing my own mind because i was like yeah people are gonna have a lot of pushback and you know even when my mom would talk to you know our, our her family and stuff oh my god you know they're they're like in india trained my mind to like not be affected by that and yeah. obviously it still affected me a little yeah. bit but i tried my best to be like you know what i made this decision yeah. there's gonna be consequences and you just have to own up to that and yeah. you just have to deal with that so yeah. it's like and same thing as you i was like you gotta i want to prove everyone yeah. wrong kind of yeah. right i want to be the best and i want to do that yeah so. you want to like make it work yeah, yeah. exactly how about you? How did you oh my God. deal with that tension? Because you did so, stay home for a year yeah. after. When Half, you so, semester. Because, <laughs> so I moved back home in the summer, whatever. Like, dropped out and then went to OCAD. And, like, so OCAD is, it's so weird because it's, like, almost, like, the workload-wise, it's, like, harder than, like, most university, in my opinion, because you get assignments, like, every week, every day in, like, every class. So you're basically doing, like, ongoing assignments for like five courses every single week right mm -hmm. so you're giving these deliverables you're working on projects so it's very like intensive in that sense i was also working like i just wanted to like kind of be out of the house to be honest and like i also needed to make money because i just wasted a bunch of money mm -hmm. on freaking like you know having lived in res and all that stuff and like i think i was finally like understanding that these loans that i'm taking out these student loans like i have to pay them like you know like my situation was that like i needed to do that and i wanted to take that responsibility because i didn't want to put that pressure on my parents or like have them feel like they had to do that because it's not easy especially when you have like two kids so mm -hmm. i i definitely was like in my mind i was like i can't rely on them anymore like i need to really like start making my own money um obviously they're just trying to grasp what i was mm -hmm. doing right this is like brand new no one in my yeah. family really did this so it was kind of like me and like my sister as well who switched we were like kind of like trailblazing this where we were just like trying it out we didn't know what the outcome would be we didn't know what job we could get so i was like i need to like be at least financially like secure and like i was not absolutely not with like a retail job but like i would just work like crazy hours after school i'd go to school all day go to the eden center i worked at forever 21 crusty store to work at and because i was in downtown it would take me like until like midnight to get home and i had to work on my assignments so it'd be like one two three a.m and my parents would be like what are you doing like awake and like obviously that stressed me out too because i was kind of like if i lived in toronto i wouldn't have to do this but they didn't really want me to do that but once i had some savings i was like i need to move out i had to make another like decision i think all these like harsh decisions mm -hmm. like one after the other after the other and like i didn't have anything to prove to them that i was doing the right thing it was just like instinct right so it was just kind of like i kept doing these things that i didn't expect them to understand because i didn't know what i was doing i had no clue i was just feeling it out i was like vibing <laughs> um i was stressed but i was vibing and then after a semester sorry i was like <laughs> i need to like move there because also like coming home took like about an hour and a half and it'd be like an hour and a half there and back and i was like this is such a waste of time you have such weird experiences oh too. my god <laughs> like freaking people whispering in my ear um someone flashed you yeah i got flashed like it's it's not like you don't want to be on the subway that late at night no, you know as like, like a 19 year old yeah as like girl. a 19 year old girl like it just unfortunately that's the way it is so eventually i was able to like justify why i was moving because i was working like retail and 
you know i had to like fund osap eventually so i was like let me get ahead of this curve and i wanted to live downtown too like i've always like loved toronto like since i was like in high school like well it made sense too for what you're doing right yeah. like the art mississauga doesn't yeah really have that, and that's where like that the arts and the culture was like more than like just like the sort of small things you get in the suburbs just because yeah. like that's the way like it's a, it's not meant for like a city of yeah. people and i really wanted to like that's like getting out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. that's like yeah. really changing things up and like getting involved in your industry and i was like i'm not gonna be able to do that in this saga and that's you know that's what i had to do and then i moved out lived in a crusty ass like i can attest to that oh my god i made it cute in the way that i could but it was crusty but as soon as you walk out her bedroom door the crust begins it was so nasty that was so oh that smell it's there's a distinct odor in the place i yeah. lived in which was like mm -hmm. it was the worst and like it was so bathroom funny bathroom and kitchen oh my god <laughs> it was like riddled with critters yeah like my first place obviously was like it was just not ideal but to me it was like everything to me i was like you're down i'm downtown, I'm downtown. like yeah. i'm i'm doing this thing so like to me it was everything even though it was like probably the worst living conditions <laughs> that someone should live in. <laughs> when I went to your place, I'm like, you know what? Living with my parents doesn't seem so bad anymore. I thought like everyone felt that way. I was like, this is where I live. Let's get you a home. <laughs> I know, <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally. We had the white refrigerator, you know? <laughs> Six years later, where are you at? <laughs> Where are well, you at? Oprah. <laughs> so, like I mentioned, I think in the last question or whatever, la last few minutes, yeah. I spent a lot of time just experimenting and trying to get my education through like experiential learning. Yeah. Um, since I was like a teenager, I always felt like I wanted to um, like disrupt the education system because. You know, even in high school, I was like, I'm not enjoying this. I don't feel like I'm learning that much and like not learning that many practical skills. Like, you know, we both talked about how we were very shy and stuff. And like, I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur and do this stuff. But I was like, I don't have those skills right now. And like, even when I would apply to stuff at school, like our, our student council or our, our IBT council, yeah. I applied to everything and I would always get rejected. And yeah. I was like, you know, I don't know how to do an interview. I don't know how yeah. to write a resume. I don't know any of this stuff. Yeah. So it was really frustrating. Um, so I was like, I feel like school is not teaching us a lot of those practical skills that we need to succeed in life. So that inkling kind of was born then that I was like, I want to disrupt the education system. Um, and then when I was like eight, no, when I was 19 in second year, I started teaching English online or sorry, during my gap gap year, I guess my, my year between first and second year, yeah. I started teaching English online because I needed money because my my parents weren't gonna fund uh, yeah. <laughs> my year, you know, just me traveling and stuff. And I wanted a car, so I had to save money for that. Um, so I started teaching English online and I realized that like, I really like it and I'm I'm kind of good at it or like, I feel like I can yeah. do this. <laughs> Accept it. I, I her. But yeah, so then I've been doing that for the last like seven years. And at the time I was like, this is just kind of to make money. It's fun, but like, it's mostly to, to, to be able to afford um, living life <laughs> um, but recent like last year I was like I really like this and honestly I've gotten a lot of like when you really pay attention to the opportunities you're getting and where you like are doing well yeah. um, it really helps to like figure out what you want to do and I found that teaching English aligns a lot with like what I'm good at what my passions are and what the world needs because English is obviously a yeah. necessary thing for for a lot of people yeah. um, so I decided last year to create a business because I always, I still wanted to do entrepreneurship. Like when I was teaching English, it was for other companies, but I was like, I need to find a way to incorporate entrepreneurship into this. Otherwise I won't be happy. Mm -hmm. So I decided to create my business Lingfluence, which is all about um, creating language education that's like empowering, more well-rounded and practical and also fun because a lot of times like you know students yeah. are scared of school it's a stressful thing it's not yeah. a fun thing a lot of times so, so we do that we do also a lot of leadership education which just kind of started because that's also been a passion of mine again because of the whole hustle culture yeah. and just like the person we're very into personal development yeah uh, so we read a lot of those books and stuff and i'm really passionate about that so mm -hmm. so yeah i decided to create this business and so far it's it's gone really really well um 
I'm really enjoying it. Like I, I, I like this year has been re- knock on wood has been really really good. Um, and I just feel so fulfilled and I, I'm not even, I haven't even scratched the surface of like what I want to do with this business, but I'm happy that I'm doing something that aligns with who I am and what I want to do. And so I'm, uh, that's where I am right now, I guess. What are you, pardon me? Where are you at right now? I mean, the viewers have gotten some, some, some ideas of, uh, what you're doing, but, but where are you right now? What's what's, what's on your mind? I'm definitely like wandering. I'm going to be honest. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with wandering. I'm like. I'm floating around. I'm doing like freelance. I'm doing like my own projects. I really enjoy making videos and editing. So like that's kind of like a skill. I guess I'm like unintentionally so good at it. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm like so learning good. as I go, but it's like it's like really fun to like create these narratives and these stories. I'm working on like a couple projects. I'm doing some stuff for Inkbox, which is really cool. And yeah, I'm just we Maybe also have... got some really good news a couple of days ago. Um, I'm gonna let kind of you tell you the good news. So we also, <laughs> me, Mithusha, and Sonia actually are starting this program. Um, we haven't launched yet, but it's in the works, but we're trying to create this program that's like completely free for young South Asian women in like underserved communities in the GTA and that basically like teaches them how to get into the arts and you know just get involved when you're like younger because like that's something I never had the opportunity to do because I didn't know where to go or like people to look up to and like I feel like we do have some of that now through social media and stuff but we're creating a program that kind of like primes you into like what this looks like how do you get into into the art space who can you connect with like we want to create a program that basically touches all those points and sets you up we'll show you kind of like what we've learned in our experience what other artist friends have done and then you can kind of feel more comfortable either entering the space or exploring what it means to be a working designer creative whatever and if anything even if you don't go in that sort of direction it's still a great way to just like understand like how to like sort of apply yourself to like future opportunities and work and stuff like that so yeah coming soon coming Coming this summer are we allowed to say that yeah (laughs) okay we're planning to launch in the summer so we'll be putting out like applications probably next may so we'll explain that in like a whole video get excited (laughs) but just get excited because that's in the works anyways that was our video on dropping out uh trying new things and where we're at now but the thing that has stayed constant through all these changes is is that we have each other we have each other (laughs) the end but but no seriously like I would not be able to do the things I did without without this 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 dude's support. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Even though we did different things, yeah. I feel like just it was cool to know that someone else in your life that's like a close friend yeah. is like on the same wave and yeah. like gets and like you. in your corner. And yeah. Like, yeah. And supports you when you like do yeah these like projects and these different things that like you know like not everyone gets because not everyone is on that wave or yeah. understands how that works so you know surround yourself with good people mm-hmm. the key message here was to don't drop out stay in school we're in a parking lot make a random sketchy parking lot making a video yeah don't be do, like you us. Wanna be us? do you want to be no, us you don't no. so stay in school especially go to business school sorry <laughs> golden hooks. <Hawks. laughs>